All right, so let's get this thing rolling here. You ready to get going? I'm ready. All right, everybody, welcome back to episode 23, the Jordan episode, the LeBron episode, actually. Let me critique that. Uh, we have the LeBron episode here with Erica Costell. Uh, tonight, we are diving in to the ideal partner and some dating stories and some fun with Erica. Um, Erica is someone who I met probably about two years ago, has it been now? Yeah, it was like two... Was Fashion Week, right? Fashion, Fashion Week, yep. Yeah. Yep. It was Fashion Week. It was under the bridge in Brooklyn. Oh, it was that Met Gala thing. Yep, yep. That's right. Okay, yeah. So two years ago. To be clear, I was not invited to the Met Gala, but, you know, when you can't, <laughs> you go to the after party. <laughs> That's right, same. <laughs> uh, we also got Phil Fit here with us today. What's up? Dominique's running late, and Katie has a plumbing issue. There's water going all over her house right now, so pray for Katie and that issue. Oh. Oh, that sucks. What? Mm. Yeah. So her boyfriend, you know, he he, he was a, he was a kid who'd never really had to do much growing up. Just like just do good in school. Like his parents took care of him. You know what I mean? So yeah. now, and Katie came from the opposite end of that that spectrum, where like her mom taught her how to do everything, and like you find a way to do it yourself because it's cheaper that way. And uh, and that's how Katie is. And she's been pushing Dylan to start doing some more stuff around the house. So Dylan tried to fix the AC. Uh oh, and, and and pulled a oh, pipe off. No. I guess and never put the pipe back and just flooded out. I guess Backfired real quick. Yeah. So so two lessons it's there. The that counts though. He tried. He tried one, but yes, hi, hire a pro. I always say I always hire a pro. That's I stay right. in my lane. Stay in my lane. <laughs> That's not my lane. <laughs> but um, but no, it it, it was cool. They they'll figure it out. She says they got it under control. Good. But I'm um, I'm excited to have you on here, Erica. Uh, I mean, you've done you've accomplished so much. Um, I mean, your, your clothing, how much, let me say this right. Yes. Get it right. Arika. Akairi. Akairi. Well, damn it. It's my name so backwards. Well, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it's a Kairi sport. It is hard though. It's like a weird word. Mm -hmm. So we have, yeah. she, so she does a Kairi sport, which is a, a very successful clothing brand. Um, and like the fitness fashion world, I would say, right? Like, yeah, it's sweat. like athleisure, off duty, just kind of like street style. Yeah, she knows way more about style than I do. Yeah. And if you ever see me and Erica standing next to each other when we're dressed, you can definitely tell who is in the <laughs> style and who is not. <laughs> A for effort, though. Yeah, but but I'm excited today. Um, we're gonna talk about ideal partners. Yeah. And I'm interested to go into this topic because I think Phil, of course, he's older. He's 46 years old now. 47. Okay. 47, my Four, bad. 47, baby. 47 years old. So, well, And he's had you. partners in his life. And, and I feel like, you know, I have questions on it because I feel like you, does your ideal partner always change or evolve or how does that yeah. happen? You know, or if you marry early on, how does that work? You know, mm. so yeah. I want to ask you, Good we question. always start the show with a hard hitting question. Okay. And then we go into a song because we can listen to music on this app and we get some and we get a little break. And then you get to think about what you want to answer it with. Oh, cool. So we're going to go with the hard-hitting question first. When you picture the one, the guy, mm -hmm. what is the first quality that comes to your head? Emotionally intelligent. Whoa, you just jumped the gun. But we're going to let you explain that. We're going to go to a song yeah. first, Erica. What song you got for us? Me? Yeah, you gotta pick a song. Um, do Morgan Wallen eight six five. Eight six five four zero nine. What's up? We're back. We're back. Um, welcome to the Everybody Me Show, everyone who just joined us. Um, we are here with Erica Costell and Phil Hello. Fit, nice. the man himself, <laughs> and we are talking about ideal partners. And the question, the hard hitting question of the day was, when you think about that one guy. That Mr. Right, that that, that the man. Mm -hmm. What's the first quality you think of? And I said emotionally intelligent. So that that's the most important quality to you. Yeah. I, I mean, at least at this point, like I just turned 30. So I feel like that above everything else is important because if I feel like in a, this might just be the people I meet in L.A. or like maybe when I was younger. But if you can meet a situation with like maturity it's like hard to find, right? Like guys get so defensive and little like the, if there's no ego and you're like able to understand like, oh, this isn't about being right or wrong. This is about like knowing you're my partner and like feeling safe. Like that's what I mean by the, like knowing maybe owning your emotions too. Just all of it together is like 
definitely number one. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if someone's coming at you and like you're in a huge fight and they can meet you with like maturity mm-hmm. instead of being like F off or like whatever, like ghost you for a week, then you guys are fighting, then it's like back and forth. It's like I don't have I don't have time for that. Have you I had a relationship that had long. someone that was emotionally intelligent in it? Yeah, I've actually had um two. When, and they were actually like my first one, I was like 20. Second one was like 22. And yeah, I would say two of yeah, they were pretty they were pretty good about it. So there's been a long, long streak since though. You know, very long streak. <laughs> yeah. I, lost emotionally intelligent I, I think it coincides with once you hit like like fame in LA and all that, you just found no well, emotionally intelligent people. <laughs> I there's not a lot of it out there. I mean, I could just be in the wrong in the wrong rooms, but yeah, what the hell? That's like going backwards. Yeah, right. <laughs> 20, 22. <laughs> and you know what? Blows up, gets famous. Now. Right. And then it's just like, and then it's like 30, it's been nothing. They're both engaged. I think one has a kid. So like they figured it out. Were they, were they, were they good old boys from Tennessee? One actually was from Indiana. Okay. And the other one was from Napa Valley. Did you meet them in college? I met one. So the first one I met in high school, like my last high school spring break in Panama City Beach. I don't know if you've ever been. Lit. <laughs> Lit. Yes. And then the year later, I went back and we like met back up on the beach and like fell in love. It was like a whole thing. And then I actually ended up moving to here, like to Tennessee, mm-hmm. instead of going to New York for modeling. So I was convinced I was like going to get married by like 20. Didn't work out. <laughs> it didn't. That's the <laughs> South. Years down the road, it did not work out. <laughs> I have a question piggybacking off of that. Mm-hmm. Now that you're 30, do you feel any pressure? Because that's what you're in, you know, what you thought you were going to be at 20. Yeah. It's, we, I was just talking about this one of my friends. It's not a pressure. It's more or less like it's a time thing. Right. So like before I would go on dates or I would like casually date or like whatever. Now it's like, I have to find, I really have time for myself, you know, and I'm not in LA to date. I'm mm-hmm. in LA to work. And to like get to where I want to be, that's not like my goal out there. So it's more of a, not pressure, but like my sister, she's 25, just had twins. Like my two best friends are married. So it's like a weirdness. Yep. But it definitely puts my time in perspective. Like if I'm not, I don't really casually date anymore. Like I definitely have, but if I don't think or even know a little bit about the person, I'm not, I'm not doing it. At what's, this point. what's the time frame you give a, give a guy? Like how many dates? Yeah. Or like, I feel like recently I've met people like through mutual friends, like no, no dating apps. I've never really done dating apps actually, but like, I don't know. Like if you can't, it's like emotional, like, or like a real intelligence in general thing. If you can't spark my interest in like, honestly, like two dates, it's kind of like, like, you know, I agree with you. I agree. I think, you know, I I, I think, you know, in one date. To be honest. Well, that's why I do dinner. That's 100%. why. I, yeah. Yeah. That's why I always do dinner on the first date because if we can't have a conversation or we can't spark each other's interest off that first date, just sitting there yeah. talking with each other, you know, over a few drinks and some food. Yeah. If there's dead air. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. We're not compatible. This ain't it. And I like give, it depends. Like if I, it depends on the person, but it's like the first day, like some people are nervous. Like I've been nervous on a date before. So I'm like, Okay, well, he's trying. Like, let's go for another date. And if it's not, if it's not there, it's just like it's just goodbye. not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's see you never. See you never. See you never. Phil, <laughs> Phil, what for the hard hitting question? Go ahead. What's the first thing you think of about your like your partner? The most important quality they got. Wow. Well, I'm not gonna say. Listen, you're saying quality, but but there's gotta be attraction. Okay, so I'm. Oh yeah. We're all about, you know, I, I hate to say it, but Feel we're, freak. we're physical, you know. <laughs> you got to spark my interest when I look at you first, you yeah. know. When I look into your eyes, I want to, do you have the features that I like? Because that all changes, you know. Yeah. But when I when I met my wife now, man, I knew within minutes of meeting her and seeing her, like, there's going to be something there. That's amazing. Within minutes. Wait, how long have you guys been married for? We just f- celebrated five years marriage. So you knew, like the second. That's see, that's the kind of story I'm trying to have. I, 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 I not only, too. yeah, I not only that I know, like we talked and we. I told her the first night. I've told this story, but I told her the first night she's gonna be my girlfriend slash my my date for my 40th birthday party because I was 39 yeah. when I met her, and then by the end of the night, I'm like. You just knew you're gonna marry. You're gonna marry me. 
<laughs> like, you don't have an option. Like, seriously, <laughs> you're going to be my wife. Have you <laughs> ever felt that fire with somebody when you first met them, Erica? Um, yes. Besides One Fashion time. Week? <laughs> what? Besides Fashion Week under the bridge? Oh, my God, shut up. <laughs> I would say my second boyfriend, but here's the other thing. Like, I go for fire fast, and I feel like that's maybe not the way to, to do things because I feel like, at least in the past like five years but i have had that one time yes so what about you so for fashion? so i'm always any girl i've ever dated is because there's been fire right away and oh really yeah and i'm over three none of them have worked <laughs> out but well <laughs> i'm trying to go the other i'm trying to go the other route though yeah and it's hard i'm trying to go somewhere where I, i've had a foundation i've built it and it's hard I don't think what you do change. You mean, though, like, go ahead. Go ahead. You mean like by dating your friends? Is that what you mean by foundation? <clears throat> yeah, or, or like, someone like I've known for a long time who like before I've ever, yeah. you know, and and that's been hard because fire, like, there's, like you said, like there's something about that sexual physical attraction that gets you there. But then once you get past that step or like of having sex, like I feel like I've opened up so much more with people in those intimate times and they've been able right. to open yeah. up to me in those intimate times and you need that that desire and that fire to get to those moments i right. feel like yeah for and, sure and then once you do it's like when like the walls start coming down for me yeah well why would you say for the most part other than like the one every like the the rose or whatever why did they fade out was it too much fire too fast or was it like um i i think uh they've they've all had their certain downfalls in my first relationship i think we really struggled with distance yeah. Um, and that was really hard. Um, the second one was we were we, we met during COVID. And so we had nothing to do but spend time with each other all of COVID. Yeah. And then once the world picked back up again and I got busy and, and, and she started to get a little busy, we were away. And that caused a lot of issues because I'd be so in my head about work and trying to get things done right. and whatnot. And I wasn't able to give her the same love I was giving her when we had nothing but free time. Yeah, I've heard that a lot, actually, from people who started. Either they are, like, getting married or they broke up. Like, there's really not a yeah. in-between story that I know. It's, like, it was intense. And then my last relationship, there was a crazy connection, immediate fire, and I just looked past all the red flags when I did that. <laughs> and I just ran through them. And, yeah. and then I realized, like, a month in, I was like, oh, no. Happens to the best of us. This ain't it, you know. But that's how you learn. But there's yeah. a difference between fire and that sexual attraction too, though. Right. You know, so right. I'm not I, just I talking know, about. Yeah, I don't know if I could split that. I didn't know if I split those two on my last one. You know. Right. You'll yeah. You'll get there with time. Like seriously, it's it took me a long time to get through it. Like, yeah. I'm always no. I've always been a hopeless romantic. I it think it's hard to like decipher that though. Like, is it fire or is it like lust? It's on. Yeah. I, I always have to say, I'm going to ride this thing till the wheels fall off. <laughs> <laughs> and just hoping they never fall off. They always do. <laughs> well, I also think, too, at this point, it's like, yeah, the fire's fun. But, like, at the end of the day, I'm looking for, like, a best friend. Yeah. Like, I'm not looking to just have, like, obviously, it's going to be fun. But same thing with work. It's like, I, I realistically, like, do not have time for myself. So, if in order to me to be sharing my time, like, you better be cool. I agree. Like, you better be, like. You better be better than my own time. Thing. What? You better add to my time. Or yes. Better than my own. Yes. Yeah. Or like, at least like, give something like that's not like the fire's fun, but it does get boring. At least I feel like not boring, but it's like, okay, what else? Again, yeah. back to the emotional intelligence. I feel like I am very into with my emotions. So if I can, it's, if I can find someone who can meet me there, it's like, that's cooler than how hot you are. Even if you are hot. Right. You know? So, but I, I mean, I think the fire is like the initial attraction. Yeah. But like, no, you, for sure. It's it's you have to keep that fire going. That fire is gonna die, right? Mm -hmm. But everyone like like you've been in you've been married for five years. Yeah. And like you yeah. have kids, you have all these things. Like those things put dampers on fires. Oh, it does. But you have to find ways to keep yeah. creating those fires. And I feel like in my relationships, we had no problem creating those fires. It was just irreconcilable things irreconcilable things that have happened between us i was like yo we cannot like like you don't respect me the way i respect you if you're acting like right this. right you know well, respect is huge and i feel like people think it's just like respect is overall it's that it's respecting time it's respecting like boundaries even when you do know someone for a long time and that's also hard to find 
what, at least in my situation. So, so what, what are you looking for, Erica? Like what would be yeah. ideal? This is the whole podcast mm-hmm. or this whole but, radio show is about well, what's your ideal thing. partner. It's really hard to date me. And I'm honest <laughs> about that. And like, I tell guys this cause like everyone thinks that they want to like be in a relationship or like, you know, I really will. If I can't see you for five days, like I'm cool with that. And it's not, or if I can't see you for a month, I'm cool with that. And it's nothing about the wow. other person. It's like, I have done so much to get where I am. A month, a month can wait. Like if it's going to be, you know what I mean? I don't. When you say where you are, is that in a, yeah, in a business who, perspective or is that in like in like a healthy, I'm independent and good on my own perspective? Well, I think that's another issue. It's like, I am so good on my own. Like at, at this point, it's like, I've learned what I want. I've gone through so much shit relationship wise, I don't really need anyone. I don't need mm-hmm. someone to provide for me. I don't need someone. I would like a best friend who like, like what you were saying, like adding to the time and like respecting, like, Hey, it's not going to be like this forever, but let me be your friend, your best friend and your partner and whatever else. And then we'll get there. Like I'm looking more, I think I would say long term. Like, I don't think that I, I don't think that I really care about like dating around anymore. Yeah, but I believe you, know. you have to date around until you find the right one. Yeah, you gotta keep, but you gotta keep, you gotta get that bat off your shoulder and keep swinging. Do you think that that goes back to like, if you're looking, it's not gonna happen? Because that's kind of anytime that I would casually date, and I'm like, oh, like this is like brutal, you know? And then I would quit looking, like, boom, oh, I kind of like this guy. So that's how. I mean, that's different perspective. I get it. Mm-hmm. He'll find you. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, he'll truly find. But on what on what he said, you do have to date to find that person as well, though. Right. Yeah, that's true. But I think I, I think something you said that I think is leading in the right direction is like meeting people through mutual friends. I think is always a great way to meet people yeah. because your friend is someone you trust, respect, right. and care what they think about. And so yeah. you think they're going to put you with someone like minded like them, right. or that is going to be good for you. Right. And I also have a very small group of like real friends, at least out in LA. And they're all in healthy relationships. They're all like emotionally intelligent. Like I, you are who you surround yourself with. Right. Yes. And that's another thing too, in LA, like you can, even if I like someone, if I go around a situation and I don't like not even one of their friends or like, or if they're like saying, Oh, every, every girl I dated was crazy. It's like, you, this is a problem. Like, cause you really are who you surround yourself with. And out there, I'm not saying everyone in LA is bad. I love LA. There's good and there's bad, but the people that I've been, Terrible place. I'm like, I, if you're talking like that about your best friend or about your ex, what are you saying about me? Mm-hmm. No, you know? I think you always got to be careful about the ones who are talking the most shit. Yep, exactly. exactly. The ones who love the well, bad mouth and talk, they're they're doing the same thing behind your back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like, care, like, be careful who you're talking about. Like, I pay attention to everything, by the way. Like, I might not seem like I I'm pretty chill, but like one thing. And I also don't forget anything, which is a blessing and a curse. But like one thing will stick there and I'm like. What was I wearing that night I met you? What? What was I wearing the night I met you? No, because if I answer this correctly, you're going to think I'm a weirdo. Everyone's going to be <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember too because there's a photo. I, oh, really? Mm-hmm. There is a photo. Mm-hmm. But you were in a dark yeah. dress. What else? Shoes. I had a wig on. <laughs> you, were, you were wearing... A blue suit. I was. I was. See? Look at that. Wow, that's good, though. We made lasting impressions on each other. I remember. I really do remember everything, and that's why it's easy for me to move on, because it's like there's not a fight, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay, noted, like, peacefully dipping out. Yeah. I believe yeah. when that person walks into your life, you said something earlier, like, you, you're you okay with not seeing that person for a month? Yeah. When you find that guy... You're not gonna want to be away from him for a month. Well, I promise you that. I now, because I'm like single, right? right. So I have been in that as well, but it's still like I don't. I would never go into someone's life and be like, "Well, let me take away from what you're doing." So I expect the same back, and it does suck. Like dating, at least in like the public eye, that's hard. Yeah. Because it's like it gets a month is not that long if you're gonna be with someone forever. What's that's the hardest like, part about dating in the public eye? Well, I don't. Like I haven't, I had a very public breakup in like 2018. And since then, the thing, it's not that I'm hiding a relationship. It's just like, I would never make it a part of my brand again, unless it became like, you're getting married, Mm -hmm. right? Like you have to share. And I think that there's so much like more, or it's more special when you're not hiding it, but like, I don't think it needs to be aired out. 
That's like between y'all. Yep. You know what I mean? And then if something needs to be shared or you want to post a picture, but like I haven't been people I've obviously dated since 2018, but I've never once like talked about it, confirmed it, nothing. Cause you probably know this. Like I think of social media as work, right? Mm -hmm. So instantly, and especially if the person is not in the social media or like the public eye, it's confusing for them. So it's like, I'd rather not have to explain that or like people, you know, tagging you in this or saying this or bringing up the past. It's just like, it's almost a protection thing for the relationship. And then if it gets there, I would no, like publicly, like even, even if there was like photos being taken or something, like I'm like, go like walk like that way. Yep. Cause it puts pressure. It does. Put, I don't care what anyone says and people say it doesn't. It absolutely does to an extent hmm. on every relationship. Pressure is the hardest things for me. Like relationship. it is It's terrible, especially with the public yeah. eye, everything. I mean, mm -hmm. even, I mean, it, it can definitely break you. I mean, even you right now, you're going, you're dealing with pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that shit just makes, makes it tough. It's, it's like, it's, it's heavy. <laughs> it's hard. What's happening? What's happening over there? What did I miss? <laughs> you, bu buying a house. Yeah. I'm, you know? just, I'm, I'm oh, house yeah. hunting and it's like, you know, I get an impression from the, from the wife and it's, you get her hopes yeah. up and then something happens. Yeah. And it changes. Like it's, 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 a, it's a crazy market right now. And, yeah. But like, there's like so many expectations and pressure and, and I just want to make her happy. That's it. I want yeah, to, it, keep, right. keep her happy. Should I say? Keep her happy. That's a great goal. Oh that's a, yeah. Incredible goal. That's yeah. That's what we try to do. Right. That's what I try to tell all my homeowners I'm working for or building for. I'm like, what does your wife want though? You know, cause that's who really that's is the boss. Oh, the no doubt about it. Yeah. Cause especially she spends the most time in the house, mm -hmm. you know? So I want to make sure it's yeah. what she wants. That's true. And she'll like make it, you know, the aesthetic. It's got to be her. It's her way or the highway. That's the rule. Amen. <laughs> I've learned that, but it took me a long time to learn that. Okay. <laughs> Erica, what, what are some of the other uh, important qualities for you when finding this ideal partner? I think someone who has standards is very important because. Why'd you look I'm at me not, like that when you said I'm so? not saying. <laughs> I didn't mean to give you one. Are you trying to say he doesn't have? <laughs> we'll get into that later. But uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm joking. They're important because, like, again, it goes back to at this point, if I was 23, I don't I don't think I really cared. You know, like if I was 22, but it's it goes back to like you are who you surround yourself with. And if he's out there talking to every type of grits, like, well, that's your type, like that's fine, but like, how am I your type? Like it's almost like a confusing so standards. I disagree with you though. Right there. Really? Yeah, because so, so do I. Ask Phil. My type is everywhere. Me too. Right. Like I just. I actually same. No, but I mean like, I didn't. I meant more of like if you know that they're going to talk to anyone, it's like, well, then why do I need to be a part of? Yes. Standards and like respect and like. Oh, okay. I get that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was about to say type. Yeah, I don't think. I don't really have a type either, to be honest with I'm you. I'm all over the map. Yeah. Yeah. If, are any of your exes alike? Would you yeah. say they are? Yeah. Oh, so. At least like the the serious ones, they all have like an aesthetic for sure. But like people I've dated have been like all over. What does what does that mean? They have an aesthetic. Like they all kind of like tall, brown hair, blue eyes, kind of that. Light yeah. eyes. Yeah, yeah. Athletic. Okay. So you have a type then? I thought you meant like they post like in certain color schemes on their Instagram. No, I don't know. Well, maybe they do. I don't know. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but they all like if you were putting them all in a room, like I I would tell my girlfriends like, oh, I don't have type. They they pull them up and be like, oh, really? Because like these are the ones you picked long term. They all mm -hmm. look pretty similar. So maybe I do, but I don't mean to. It's just who I end up with. Yep. You know. So you generally don't have a type either then. No, I, I would say no. Yeah. But do do any of your girlfriends look the same? Like your ex girlfriends? No. No. Not even a little. You, the oh. three completely different people. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I'll just go for the other. I, I will say this though: they all eyes is like the one thing. Yeah. Like they all have yeah. like beautiful eyes, and I love like eyes. I think just capture me every time. I agree, because eyes never change. Mm hmm So even when you're unless you get glaucoma, you're, unless you're wearing contacts. <laughs> I actually, I have I have a hilarious story about eyes uh -oh. and contacts. Oh <clears throat> you want to hear this, Erica? Yeah, let's hear it. Halloween this past year, I'm drunk, right? I left a wedding on Halloween because I was like, yo, I am way too drunk to be here. I'm with too many rich folk. I, I feel like an alien right now. I got to get out of here, right? Jimmy Kimmel and Jon Stewart were at this wedding. 
Oh boy. And I was wasted. I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. Right? So I evacuated the premise, left a very expensive place in, in Jupiter to go to the West Palm Beach, to go downtown <laughs> West Palm Beach and uh, oh to get boy. with some more people that were probably as drunk as I was on Halloween. Right. And everyone's right. dressed up. I'm in a suit coming from this wedding. So me and my boys, we all charge it from the wedding. We go to uh, this how you know, go to Halloween in, at a club in West Palm. And I see I run into my friend. And I'm like, they're like, hey, bring all your girls. I come join the table. They join the table. This one girl, right? She's looking at me. And all I could see is the whites of her eyes. And it freaked me out. And I thought she oh. was just looking at me and rolling her eyes to the back of the head. And I go, Yo, you need to get your friend to stop doing this or stop looking at me, or else I'm gonna have to kick her out, right? But it was Halloween. It was Halloween, but like it was freaking me out. I thought she was just rolling her eyes at the back of her head, <laughs> right? So, so I just I ended up walking away. I was I was freaked out by her. My boy takes her home, right? And they're hooking Wait. up. Oh, okay, hold on. They're Keep going. they're hooking up all night, right? And they like, and, and he said he said they would be hooking up and making out and stuff. And then they look each other in his eyes. He's like, "Yo, you gotta stop looking at me. It's freaking me out." <laughs> what? Okay, were they contacts? They were. They were what? So like, we come to find out they were white contacts that she oh, had no. on her eyes, and oh. she was a nun. <laughs> it freaked oh. me the hell out. Oh no! Someone's got to do it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> freaked me out. She didn't take him out before. Well, you didn't think for two seconds, like, oh, it's Halloween. She might not. No, I just thought she was trying to. I, I never knew white contacts existed. Ah, I got you. Yeah. Better luck next year. Yeah, that, that was not it. <laughs> that was not it. Contacts can be freaky, especially in a nightclub and especially when you're yeah. drunk. Well, that Halloween, would... there's like red ones. Yeah, there's, there's like all sorts. Ones. It's a lot. I had a lot of yeah. tequila, so there's no telling what was going on or yeah, what, you didn't know for me. You, you didn't know what yeah, you were on. Exactly. Oh, so tequila Tyler was out. Tequila Tyler was in full form right there. Erica, you haven't oh. really been out. Oh, I guess you have been out with me when I've been pretty lit on some tequila. Yeah. I think <laughs> one time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll do it again soon. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun, though. It I was. also am a tequila girl, so like... Tequila is a spicy alcohol. We, we love tequila. Eric Erica can How do party. Eric can... What? What about you, Phil? What are some characteristics that are important for you, for your ideal partner, which is your partner now? Okay. Um, I do like eyes, like you said, but um, I'm a trainer, Erica, so I'm yeah. I'm into the body too. So I'm gonna say, I like a booty. Yeah. I like a nice booty. So, and if you don't have it, I can help you get it. That's just it, what it right. is. Right. That's a great trait, actually. That's a good selling point. Guys, yep. what about the emotions, though? We're talking about butts and eyes here. Well, you, wait, wait, <laughs> you, wait, you're saying characteristics first. I'm yeah. out here. Yeah, but, it, I mean, but, it, they both do matter. They yeah. Both do matter. You got to get through that first. Physically, it's like, I like eyes, and like I like when someone's taller than me, and like, you know, like takes good care of themselves. Okay. Like, you got to take care of yourself. And then everything else, what I said, just like being mature and or not even I guess mature is part of it but just like knowing how to handle your significant other in a safe space right like yes. where you know you can talk to that person you know that they're always maybe not always going to be there but just knowing that you're in a safe environment so the relationship can be a relationship mm -hmm. you know and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick it back up what you said maturity wise all right my soulmate we became friends first. When I say friends, we did start dating, but I was right. able to tell her things that I couldn't tell another person. Right. Because she, you know, I, I told you these things because if you want to run, now's the time to run, you know? Exactly. So I blurbed out everything I could possibly think that, that would be, all right, this is going to be a red flag for her. She's going to run. Yep. She stayed. And here we are. That's what I'm saying. Like, and even feeling the fact that you knew you were safe enough to even open up, like I'm pretty guarded. So if I even can feel like, oh, I can actually like say these things, I'm like, oh, this could be something. I don't yeah. get that feeling a lot, but it, it really is like, it's the way the guy or the girl treats you. It's like, you know, yeah. like, you know what someone's about pretty early on. You know how they're going to react. Maybe not on the first date, like see how they react. That's a great time to like show the red flags, I guess. It is. Yeah. Being safe is important. Like feeling safe in a relationship. It's like at the end of the day, when all your friends get married, and all your siblings are having kids, you're gonna want a best friend. Like, I wanna be able to talk to my partner the same way I talked to my best friend since I was 15 years old, you know? 
And that's a very important quality. I think what yeah. I'm, I think what I'm learning about myself and what I want lately is like the other day I was sitting at a restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we we're sitting there eating and it was the same restaurant that me and my ex were at like a year and a half ago, right? And mm -hmm. it was like a it was like a night, it was like a fun night there. We didn't know anybody there, but music was playing. It was Latin music and we were just dancing, 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 dancing. Mm -hmm. And I need someone that can be that with me, but then also be at the house and just be chill with me. Yeah. Like I need yeah. I need like someone yeah. who's gonna give both. And like I look at people and sometimes I like I try to date him and I look at it like, can you do both with me? Can you go on the run right. with me and go crazy with me, have fun with me? And be reserved and chill with me and, 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 you know, and that's been kind of like what I've been working on lately is like, what is that? Who is that? Because. Do you date younger or like around, like, what do you typically date? Hmm. Like, what <laughs> <laughs> I've dated younger. Younger? Yeah. No, I'm just curious. Because well, I I've like dated one my age, one younger, and then the other one was a little bit younger. Yeah. Would I do that? I, I would love to date somebody more. My but the problem is I'm in Jupiter. Yeah. Right. And f the the person I want like to have the fire, to have the energy. I don't know necessarily he's in Jupiter. I agree. Yeah. I agree. But there's with you something now. wrong with long distance relations. Have you ever done either one of you done a long distance? My first, my first, my first, two were my first at the beginning, was, and then they ended up moving. We ended up like moving close, but. I did and mine didn't work. I'm not a long distance guy. No, I'm more, I'm, I'm really needy to be honest. <laughs> so, That's okay. so I need that person yeah, around yeah, yeah. me. All the time. Yeah. Not all the like, time, but you know, especially with like what you do for work and stuff. Like, I, yeah. I mean, unless you're trying to get married and settle down in Jupiter right now, you're going to have to kind of. Erica, I, I was, I was thinking about this on my car ride home today and, oh. uh, <laughs> she goes, Oh boy. Um, as I was driving home, I, I did a job in Fort Myers today. I was driving back and I was like, and I just kept getting beat up after a text or after a call from work. It's, everything was like mm -hmm. hitting me one after one after one. You know, what I thought was going to be a good day, I just kept getting beat down by more work stuff, more work stuff, more work stuff. Yeah. And, um, and I got done with that. I was like, man, I'm exhausted. I'm like, I'm like just upset. I'm like angry. You know what I mean? Like all these things. Mm -hmm. I was like, all I want to do is just go home and go put my put my head in the pillow and be done, you know, yeah. like done for the day. But then if like, but but if I had the responsibility of dating somebody, I owe it to them to talk to them and be with them. You know what I mean? I'm like, that's hard for me right now. And for as much as you yeah. work, do you find it that like when you come home from these long days and you're doing you're traveling all over modeling and doing all these mm -hmm. things that you do, you're like, I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, and that's kind of why I quit doing like the casual dating thing. So it was just like at the end of the day, so, and that's like a selfish thing, but you're allowed to be selfish sometimes, right? Like, yes, you are. In a relationship. Yep. I would quit making plans because I was just like, sometimes I just need, I'm not going to be a good person for you if I'm like this wrecked, like mm -hmm. at, at the end of a week or something like that. So yeah, it's a mix though. Like some weeks are like that and it's like, okay, like get over it. I'll be over it in like two days. But some weeks it would, of course, be nice to have someone to like talk to and like pull you out of that, which I've also been in situations where that happens. It's not like an annoying thing to go home to. It's just like when it's new or if it's like casual, it's like, I don't want, I don't really want you in my space while I'm in a bad mood, you know? He's not your person. Right. Well, He's I haven't had like a, a long, like a long relationship in like three years, almost four years. What's long for you? Three. Longest was three and a half years. But what 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 do you consider long? Well, that was my longest one. So I would say when I'm dating someone, I don't date just to date. Like I I would say I would say three years is long. Like two. That's, I mean, right? that's, that's double what I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a year is long too. Like I think a year is a long time too. I've just always dated. It's been longer than that. Have you ever lived with your partner? Yes. How was that? The first time, well, the first time was kind of split. Um, so I still had, I actually still had my own place during both of these times. It was fine. It was actually really fun. Hmm. Because I feel like when you're that comfortable living with someone, it's like, 
you're on the same vibe. It's like, you know, you get up, you go work out, you get up, you make breakfast. Like it's a good time, yep. but I'm also a control freak in a sense. And I had to keep my own space. Cause if I needed to get away, it was like, I would rather go away than like blow be up. Annoyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe that's what, that that's probably what he needs. He's never, I don't think he's ever lived with a girl. So I never made it. I, that, I never made it that far in a relationship. <laughs> though i will say that much i've always wanted to was, it I seems amazing worried that like you'd get bored of each other if that was the case and that never happened either time really that i think i'd be more fun if we were always together yeah it is fun because you don't have to worry as much like about time and like that kind of stuff because i feel like day to day i do wilder and wilder things the more i get comfortable with you yeah i mean just ask the people yeah. i work with I I you agree know. with that. Yeah, you get really <laughs> comfortable with a person. The last part. What, what was the last part? I said I said just ask the people I work with. Like we get to know each other on such a more real yeah. level because we're with each other all the time and more real things come out. And you get fun. excited to go to work, right? Yeah. You get excited to go home. You I don't know how excited they are always. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I am. You tend to loosen <laughs> up. It's all good. But you, it's kind of similar. It is kind of similar as like the good vibes. And also, if you get in a fight with them, like you're going to get over it soon, right? You, It is kind of like living. It's a good test. It's you like who you work with. All right. I got a game for you guys. I'm scared. Let me hear it. We're going to play this or that. Okay. You and Phil. This or that. And I'll answer it too. Okay. Would you rather in an ideal partner, here we go. This is, and you guys in the comments, you guys get to write in here. Introvert or extrovert? Ooh. Can it be an introverted extrovert? No, Erica. What? Okay, extrovert, extrovert. Yeah, me too. Extrovert. Yeah. Extrovert as Cause, well. Because I am. Yeah. It, didn't you always like? I always felt like you needed like an opposite in that. Yeah. But the more I think about it, I think I'm an extrovert introvert. I think I'm extrovert because I have to be, but really I'm just chill, and I need, and that's why I, I rely on someone else to be extrovert. Yeah. So yeah. so they can take over or pull it out of me sometimes when I don't have it in me. Right. Well, that's kind of what I said at the beginning. I know. I was just yeah. so you, but you like an introvert yeah. extrovert. I'm. I just need time to recharge, like introverted that way. But I love to do things. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I would, if there's an activity, like I'll do it. Everybody, everybody is commenting extrovert right now. Yeah, I'm. There we go. All right, prefers relaxing or being active. 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 Definitely active. Active. Mm -hmm. Easy. Prefers to party or lay low. It depends on the age. Yeah, it depends on the party. I'm, depends on what do you mean? <laughs> I would say lay low. Typically, like I'm not. I will. I don't go out every weekend. Like it has to be like like a game or like like an activity. Like you know something worth going to. I'm not just going to go to the club every weekend. Like a football game slash yeah, like, club. Like at it night. doesn't have to be club, but it's like it's like you go to the club like maybe once a month. But like you're going to go to the game, watch the game, have some beers, or you're going to go out with some friends and have some drinks, or go on the boat yeah. and have some drinks. Or then sit at home watching movies. Or sit at home all weekend and like just chill, like lay out by the beach. Now then, count me being out. <laughs> Laying by the beach, like having chill movie nights, you cooking dinner. Specific, because now I like I like those both equally. I don't know. I like them all as long as I can drink. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like Friday, Saturday, you go and have fun. Sunday, you lay low. That's that's me. Yep. That's it. Yep. Mackenzie G in, in the comments just wrote the answer is both to everything. Get yeah. you a girl or a guy that can do both. That can do both. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. Moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wants kids or does not want kids? Kids for sure. Honestly, I got kids. I got five kids and I love kids. Yeah. So I have a lot of, I have a huge family. So, okay. Good. Yeah. Big yeah. families normally want big, you know, yep. big families. How many kids? What's your dream for as many kids as you could have? Mm, I would say at least three. Three? I put the four number up. I thought you were gonna say four. Three or I mean, I just feel like I would have four. I have twelve siblings, you guys. So You have twelve I, siblings? Yeah. I've you got grew ten. Up, you Let's grew up go. cheaper by the dozen? Well, it's like it's a situation it's like Brady Bunch. So my uh, parents got divorced young, but you know, those step siblings have been with me since I was three. And then my mom got remarried when I was thirteen, and those ones have been around. So like, yeah, there's there's twelve of us. Damn. That's awesome. Where do you fall in line? 
So from my mom, I'm the oldest, but oh. the age range is four, 15. She was turned 15 on Monday, and then the oldest is 36. Wow. That's so awesome. Got, and we got twins now for my sister. What's the youngest? Like, hmm? What's your youngest sibling? 15. Wow. 15 to 36. Wow. Mm -hmm. Never a dull moment over in this household, for sure. I love it. All right. Mm -hmm. Funny or intelligent? You got it both. You got you to pick one, Phil. All right. Well, I'm I going. Just, I'm going intelligence. I would say funny because I'm intelligent, so it would be fine. Okay. Because it depends. Like th these are hard. There needs to be like categories. Because if they're like intelligent and boring, it's like I'd rather you be. Okay. Right, how about right. this? She's intelligent, but she laughs at what I say. <laughs> so she's not intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> You guys just broke up in the middle of the joke. Oh, sorry. He goes, he goes she's intelligent, but laughs at what, what I say. say? <laughs> and so then I go, she's not intelligent. <laughs> um, all. all right. Here I'm we go. Both. That's a both. That's a both? Yeah, for sure. I'm going to take funny. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take funny. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can rely on my intelligence. Well, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hopefully. dog or Let cat lover? Dog. Dog. Gotta be a dog. Gotta be a yeah. dog. I'm allergic to cats. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Tall or short? Tall. Well, for me, short, because I'm only six foot. I like them tall. Tall. How tall, how tall are you guys? What did you say you're... I'm six foot. He's, he's like... That's tall. I, how, how, how tall do you like him, Erica? Six, at least six foot. I would say six one, six two. I'm six three, Erica. Because I'm five eight. Mm -hmm. I'm five eight. So with heels, it's like yeah. Mm -hmm. my, my wife's five seven, so it's perfect. Yeah, there you go. You could wear stilettos with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, morning person or this one's important to me. Morning person or night owl. Morning. I say, I say morning, but I'm a morning, I'm a early riser. My wife is not, yeah. she's not, she's not a morning not. person. No, she needs her coffee first and she needs to chill first Relax. and in open. Up. Yeah. Oh, all right. Let's go. Yeah. Let's I get up. up. I am the most annoying morning person there is in the world. <laughs> Are you a night owl? No, 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 no. I go to bed at like nine thirty, ten o'clock. Oh. Yeah. Grandpa. I'm grandpa. I'm up, but, but I'm up at five and, no. and immediately, first of all, my alarm goes off and I just yell, fuck, that's me in the morning, baby. Let's just go. Like instant anxiety. Yes. Like, <laughs> and, then, and then I start blasting music like, like, like little baby or, or yeah. little boosie or something. So like, I'm just thinking about it. like one day if I have a partner and she's sleeping next to me and I'm like, and I have to change the way I do things, it's going to be really hard. Yeah. So it'd yeah, be definitely. nice to have a morning person. And also, like, if you're a night owl, like, we're going to watch a movie and we're going to get about 10 minutes into it and I'm going to be sleeping. Right. You know, so, like, you're going to be spending a lot of nights by yourself. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, the, my issue is I don't, I go to bed really late and I wake up really, like, I'm, I get up at, like, 6.30 every day, but I'll go to bed at, like, 3. You'll so, go to bed at, so it's like, I don't, I don't have So you could balance a life. Yeah. I could so do I that, can, too. Yeah. Yeah. I have a problem with sleeping. I, have I can't. I can I can stay up late and get up early. I bet you take really waking up early. Like getting being up before the like the rest of the world is so like it's a big such deal. A good feeling. It is yeah. a good feeling. Can you guys tell when I don't get enough sleep? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a, I think it's a dead like I'm just a different I'm a I'm just not a happy person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need I need four hours. If I get my four hours, I'm good. Four hours is plenty for me. I'm good. Four? Four is like somebody else's eight for me. Y'all are fucked up. I'm good with four hours. You know, you know, you know, you know, I just read somewhere. Nah, I didn't read somewhere. I saw it on TikTok, so it has to be true. <laughs> I saw it on TikTok that there was a study done. Yeah. Zero percent of people live better or, or, or can like live healthier lives off four hours of sleep. Like you need eight oh, no, hours. Seven, you need somewhere between seven to eight hours of sleep. Wait, how long have you known me? I've been doing four hours of sleep. For my entire life, I know, but just know, just know, no, no, what you could do on eight. It's the quality of sleep. It's you're about getting. your heart and everything. 
It's more I, my heart's good. If you fall out on me one day, I'm going to tell you. My doctor Phil, said we are good. Dr. Phil, Ken, I'm shouting out to you right now. Dr. Ken. Sleep cycle out. On his, like grave, on his grave will say, Phil, worked out and worked other people's out. Loved everyone, but only slept four hours. <laughs> it was going to say, I lived. It's what it said. It will say, <laughs> that motherfucker did live. It's going to say, I lived. <laughs> no, but it says quality of sleep. Like, if you're getting a good quality four hours of sleep, it's better than getting seven or eight hours of whatever sleep. So exactly. I don't know if that TikTok was true. Yeah, because I'm going to send it to you guys and you guys can get back to yeah, me on send that. It to me. All right. We'll be the judge. Whatever. Sci- you, guys are, you guys are better than science. It's cool. <laughs> Science for TikTok is different than real science. I was just gonna say that it was a legit podcast, guys. It was legit, just like this one. Okay, send it over. We'll see. Um, um, last last one: physical touch or gifts? Physical Physical touch. touch. (laughs) Physical touch. Yeah. All day, all day, without a doubt, without a doubt. I need to be touching you. Yep. I mean, gifts are nice, but. That that's a song. A song just came in my head on that one. Sorry, guys. What, what song? Tempted to touch, tempted to touch. You ever heard that song? No. Oh, no. we gotta find that song for y'all. My bad. See, that's where the age gap comes in. <laughs> so, someone wrote. Someone wrote. Someone wrote, someone wrote. Give me a Benz. I'm good. <laughs> Give me a Benz. <laughs> I won't say no to gifts. I didn't say I would say no. I just rather be no, touched first. Gifts are nice, but like, it has to be. I mean, like, like a thoughtful gift. Yep. Like you know, like a. Like notes or like, actually, I'm not going to give you guys any any tips. I'm going to save those for when I need them. What? <laughs> I know how to do really thoughtful. I mean, thoughtful gifts are way better than like a bag or like a pair of shoes. I agree. Hello. Oh is, my god! Thank you. Is that your booze, pops? What is in here. Uh, high noon passion fruit. Oh, thank you. What a guy. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. Hell yeah. That's yeah, what I'm talking we, about. We got room service in this house. I love that. All right, here we go. We're going to go into another song. Okay. And then we're going to finish up with the collars. Perfect. You ready? Yep. You got a song for me? Drops of Jupiter by Train. Wow. Good you want to come to Jupiter, don't you? Good song. Tyler. You want to come to Jupiter. Oh, Let's go. Song. We're going to get Erica to Jupiter, y'all. She <laughs> needs Drops of Jupiter right now. It's crazy. What a request. But we just grown more. Yep. So that's an- yep. Wow, we're trees. We're we're trees. We're a bunch of we're a bunch of trees. We're a bunch guys, of trees. We're back. We're back, and we just solved a mystery, guys. <laughs> we're trees. Don't tell me I'm an oak, though. Isn't that one of the oldest ones? <laughs> I'm a white oak. <laughs> <laughs> Big oak tree. Oh man, we'll, we'll explain that another time. But guys, this is the most fun part of the show, where you guys get to call in and uh, talk to Erica, talk to us. Bring on your questions, your topics, or whatever you want to say. It's always fun. Let's do it. Calls are coming in. Hold on. Before we accept the call, Erica, I forgot to bring this up. Yeah. A lot of people were on uh, Instagram Live Mm -hmm. talking about this black eye that you got here. (laughs) And and you need to tell us what happened. It's a two-part story. So the little bit of the black eye started because I did a beauty treatment and I did it too hard. What and beauty it, treatment? It was like a roller. Like gotcha. I, I, I basically like popped a vein. But it got worse and it spread down here in my cheek and I have like a unicorn lump up here. Damn. Because I was on a date last weekend, first date with this guy. And we're walking and I fully just rocked myself into a glass wall. Like no stop. My fate, my head, the left side of my face completely like knocked me out and it like Jesus. obviously like hit my whole face wow so so when that happened what did he do he was just well it was bad because he was going to open the door but i was like turned talking to him so i was like probably being like sad or like whatever just like joking around and i he was just like no like, no you did not like no you did not just walk into that wall and i said and this is why i don't go on dates I literally have a concussion <laughs> and three more bruises on my face. Jesus. Wow. So I walked into a glass wall, but I've also broken my jaw and my nose by sleepwalking into a wall before. So I'm just like kind of clumsy. Holy he smokes. Well, he handled it well. He handled it well? Yeah. Would he go, wait, are you guys going to go on another date? Well, I'm here. So 
That was in LA. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe. I mean, I feel like if someone can handle me rocking myself into a glass wall, they deserve another date. Respect. I, I think right? so, for sure. Right? Like, <laughs> so probably. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. We we all find out what the black guy was. All Good right. Times. Ready for some calls? Yes. Let's try this one. Hannah, Hannah, gotta unmute yourself. Hello? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, we can Hi, hear you. We can hear you. Hold on, hold on. I gotta turn you up. I so can't hear you. I gotta turn it up so Erica can hear you. I also have my headphones on. I can take them off. No, no, you're good. Erica, can oh, you hear? No. What's going on, Hannah? Nothing. I'm just studying for finals. There you go. Ooh. What you got for us tonight? Um, I do have a question. I loved, like, the section. It came at the best time because... One of my close guy friends and I, we have been like hanging out for like since the beginning of the semester. And um, yeah, he just like, I think he's like more serious about it, but I'm kind of scared about the commitment part of things. So I didn't know if like you have any um, tips on like how to balance like independence in a relationship and not worry too much about that and just like let yourself like experience and go out how you talked about like dating people to figure out what you want and all that because i've listened to like all the past episodes actually i just found like your podcast and i binge all of them so i know that's like a common theme about some of them so i was just curious what you think i'm happy i finally get to ask this eric you want to go first are you saying this is a um like one of your guy friends or <coughs> possibly going to want to start dating or he possibly wants to start dating you? Um, it's pretty, it's like mutual, but in the, I think it's more so him. Apparently. <laughs> Just right. I'm, I'm so independent to like a fault, if that makes sense. But like, I'm yeah, no. I think, so it's like I mean, if you life. could, if it was me, if you could see yourself potentially being with him, just start taking it slow. Like, I feel like there's yeah. nothing wrong with trying that out as long as there is boundaries with your independence. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like as long as he can respect that, why not? That's true. I like the why not. Yeah. I'm trying to just trust myself and just trust because I've never had, like, a serious relationship. Yeah. Uh, there are some in the same boat, uh, like... I've never had a serious relationship. Um, I'm just like waiting for like a special person and I have like high standards and right. like, a hopeless romantic. Like I'm just waiting for like that <laughs> style that's of thing. And I just haven't found that yet, but I don't know. Yeah, that's. Hmm. Can, can, I, can I fire off real quick? Fire. Go T. Hannah, how old are you? I'm 20. You're 20. And this guy, I'm guessing, is probably 20. Nineteen or twenty-one, same age, basically. Yeah, he's almost twenty-one. So the old me was like, "Oh, don't ever date. Don't, just you know, be independent, have fun." But what I will tell you right now, I feel like you're so used to being independent, you never had a serious relationship or never tried, and it's your own comfort level that is not letting you date this man or date other men because you're waiting for something so, so like miraculous or perfect or something. But you'll never know what you like until you start dating people. Huh? Trying not—that was the word that kept coming up when we were talking about it. Is like the word "perfect." Is it's kind of not unrealistic, but um, it could be too much of an expectation, I guess. Yeah, and, and like, like too much of like. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, Hannah, you're 20 years old, right? And you have so much life and so much things to learn and do in front of your life. And you've been single, you've done all that, but you haven't really dated anybody yet because you haven't really given no one a chance because they've had this unreal expectation in your own mind because you love your own independence so much. But I think if you were to give this guy a chance, it's you getting out of your comfort zone and that's where you're going to learn and grow the most. And I think by dating this guy and giving this guy a chance, you will possibly learn more about yourself, how you do in relationships. You'll learn about this guy even more. And then you'll learn more as you date and as in your relationships of what you want and what you don't want. And I think it would be foolish, especially because you're in college right now. Go ahead and date this guy. Go ahead and go out together. Go ahead and see what it is and see what it's like. 
because right now you're experiencing your first set of freedom, your first chance of freedom. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, you're not home yeah. anymore. So date him, see what it's like. You may really, really love having somebody at your crib hanging out, like waking up, cooking breakfast together. You never know unless you try it. So I think yeah. you need to go out there and, and date this guy and give this guy a real chance because you've never done it. Now, if you've like dated around a bunch of times before, I'd be like, stay single. But the fact that you haven't really put yourself out there to date somebody, I think you need to get out of your comfort zone and go date somebody and get rid of the expectations and just take it for what it is. And you'll really learn a lot about yourself, about him and about what you want in your future. So this person most likely, likely will not be the guy you date and marry, but he'll be somebody that teaches you so much. And five years down the road, you'll be so grateful that you did date him. I love that. Thank you. I, I definitely like enjoy spending time with him. I like we've spent like t- almost twenty four hours together the other day, and it felt like two. Like it was like that's good. So good. Oh, that that's amazing. You're, you're that means you're into him. Yeah, yeah. That's so cute. Since you're worried about your independence, that's where the boundaries will come in because you can keep that independence while you're dating someone if they pay attention to your boundaries. Yeah, I think it's a good situation. I think it is too. You're yeah. young, enjoy it. I stand. Yeah. Okay. I love it. And you can call us back anytime and let us know how it's going. Or any more questions. We're, we're here for it. Oh, we got round two high noon for Erica in here. <laughs> keep us updated on, on this situation. Yeah, please let us know. You want me to keep you updated? Yes, yes. keep us updated on this one. I love Hell yeah. love. Give him a chance. Yeah. Well, I love you, Hannah. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for thanks for listening to all the old ones too. Sounds good. Thank you. Got you. it, Hannah. Have a good night. Bye, hey, get out of your comfort zone. It's gonna be the best thing for you. King Lion One Hundred. What's good? Okay, so it's like I have a best friend that really don't understand the way because he he thinks that everybody is his friends, and so like I don't and so because you know he, he's in the special ed class, and so many people talk about him all the time, and I can't and they think that they're being they thought that. They think that they're trying to be his friends, but they're really trying to, they're really making fun of him. When I try to tell him that it, he he doesn't understand it because his mind is like, he's like 16, but he has the mind of a 10 year old. So it's like, he, he, he's trying to be everybody's friend, but it's not working out so well. So what can I do to tell him that, like, stop trying to like, you know, Hang out like with the people that like all the people that's not trying to be your friend and all. Hmm. Does anyone want to unpack that? I'll jump on Mike. Mike, hop on, Mike. Go ahead, Mikey. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yep. I don't. I don't think you should stop him from being who he is and putting himself out there and appreciating people. And if he doesn't understand that people are treating him poorly, it's not hurting him. It's hurting them. And you should. Maybe share that with them, but like that is the smallest thing possible for people to be like belittling someone. So I would let your boy just live, have his light, share his light, glow, and don't don't take that from away like away from him. If he's not getting it, it doesn't matter. They're just making fools of themselves. He's not he shouldn't even be embarrassed by what's happening, you know? So don't worry so much about him. Just, you know, embrace your buddy, support your buddy, and that's awful about those other people, man. Just make sure they're not hurting him physically. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But well said, Mike. I agree. I agree. That was yeah, that was great advice actually. I agree with that totally. Yeah. Okay. Thank awesome. You so much. Thanks for calling in, Malachi. Appreciate you, brother. Bye. All right. All right. People are assholes. Yeah. Like I yeah. hate seeing people talk down and pick on other people. 
Me, me too. But Mike handled that very well, that and was I was gorgeous thinking, advice. Whoever that, you are, that is Mike. Mike, man, Mike, Mike. I'd be sitting with Mike, and Mike be saying some shit. I'd be like in my own head, and Mike say some shit and drops a drops crazy knowledge on me. I'm like, damn, Mike. Everything my whole life. Yeah, that's the man behind the camera. He's, I love it. Oh, Mike. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for calling. Thanks for uh, letting me join the call. Of course. <laughs> kind of more going along like the advice side of things um i'm 24 i live in california um born and raised in a little christian family and everything like that so for me i'm like going through school i focus on school i focus on sports and um same thing with college so i've never had a boyfriend, never been on a date, all this other different type of stuff. And I'm fine with that. I'm a very independent person. I know who I am. But then there's like, in the back of my head, I'm like, am I missing out on something? And now that I'm 24, I've never experienced things that you should have experienced in like high school or college. I'm like, where do I even begin? That's really, well, I would say the first thing, there's no like time on when you should be experiencing things. I was actually just talking to my friend about this. So like what, whether it was high school or when you're 21 or whatever, that doesn't matter. So don't feel like you're behind number one. Or that you're missing number, anything. What? Or that you're missing anything, honestly. Yeah, no, definitely not. And I was going to say, I feel like I would have saved myself a lot of heartbreak if I just started dating at 24. I feel like that's a perfect age to start dating. Cause you know more of who you are, you know what you want for the most part. And the people you're going to go after are going to align with that kind of energy. So are you asking like where to find someone or like how to start? I guess kind of like, I know I'm not like, I'm fine with how things would and everything like that. Um, I guess it's just like where to start. Cause I'm not into the dating apps. I'm more of an yeah. old soul. I like to meet people like organically. So where I live, I'm like an hour from San Francisco, and I don't know if San Francisco is truly my scene to like go and meet people, you know? Right. See, well, you guys are probably no more because I'm not a dating app person either. Neither am I. What about like a group of mutual <laughs> friends? Like, do you have friends who you trust who have maybe someone they could set you up with? Or do you want to go like way outside of the friend group, like something brand new? It's probably going to have to be something brand new because me and my friends are kind of like all are on the same thing where we were just like so school focused and everything like that. And we're just like enjoying our lives, laying back, chilling, having our little like nights outs and whatnot. But um, we're, we're just kind of like I chilling. say you and those girls take a road trip to the closest like state that you would want to find a man in and start there because that's fun. Even if you don't find a man, you make a memory. That's what I used to do, Loki. <laughs> Make memories. But, but we yeah. did do a road trip to Reno once and hey. it ended badly for those two, but they had a great time. <laughs> yeah, see, you don't really lose. <laughs> yeah. I also think too, like like Phil talked about this. Like someone was asking like how how to get back out dating. I was gonna bring it up. Yeah, Phil, take take it away. Great yeah. question, actually. All right. All right. If, Especially if you're, if you're an old soul. Yeah, since you're an old soul and Listen, just put yourself out there. Just go to a restaurant, sit by yourself, if you don't mind. In fact, not by yourself. Sit at the bar first, just alone, and just look at your surroundings. And trust me, a gentleman, they're out there. They'll buy you a drink, get to know someone, talk to your bartender when there's not someone next to you, and then slowly work your way to a table. You understand? Because you said you're independent, right? Yeah. Okay, well, this is this is a scary thing to do in the, in the very beginning, but I've got faith that you can do this. Start at a bar, have a, have a drink by yourself, and you'll meet somebody, and start and start there. I'll, I'll give it a try. Even if that's most difficult, just just start with you and your friend going to the bar together. I was gonna say, so yeah. you can bounce off each other. Take a single girlfriend. Take you and your friend and bounce off each other, and just be there to meet people and and, and talk and and. and the more you do it, you're not going to find the guy right away. But I think the best thing you can learn from doing it is 
just that communication, learning how to talk to people at the bar and how to mm-hmm. start conversation, how to yeah. find things to talk about when you don't even know each other and how to keep the conversation going. Cause all that stuff's going to help you and teach you when you keep meeting people more so down the road. And I mean, I've, I've shot a thousand lines and, and tried a thousand conversations at a bar. And that's how I learned to keep talking and keep things up. Yep. And that's how Eric and I took a picture together. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. You know? Also, too, like, going into a, with an open, like, a non-guarded energy, I feel like that's important, too. Because now that you say you're ready to date, like, going and be like, yeah, I'm going to meet someone tonight. Like, tell yourself that ten times. Every time you go out, be like, I am going to meet the man of my dreams at this bar. And then, sure as shit, one day, he's just going to pop up. I promise. Eric, that was brilliant right there. Speak it. You have to speak it. (laughs) I'm all about that life. But also 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 be proud of where you're at though. Yeah. Like you're 24 years old, you're you're playing college athletics, you busted your ass in school, you probably have a great job right now. Like you're doing things to set you up to be where you are in life and like and you're you're exactly where you're supposed to be and experience what you're supposed to experience at this point in time. And everything is going to lead you to the right direction. You just have to believe it. But just know like you didn't miss anything. You were doing what was best for you and what was right for yeah. you the whole time. Yeah. One more thing. If there is somebody that you have your eye on already in your college athletics, shoot your shot. Hit them up. Don't be afraid. You know? I actually have no problem doing that. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. (laughs) And we've talked and hung out, and that's as far as it ever went because then we just kind of like, you know what? We're better off friends. But like, that's how it usually turns out is like, I make just like great friends with everybody and we just have like a great time well great friendships build a, build into something else if you allow it to mm-hmm. i think you need to get <laughs> you, you need to get your best wing girl and just start hitting the bars together yep. and just 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 one will make you and her friendship better but then you'll and just learn how to talk to people at the bars and just start learning that communication how to keep conversations going because guys suck at it too, but the more you do it, the better you get at it. I have just the lean girl in mind. There we go. There it is. And remember, you're the woman. You're always in charge, okay? And you have a lot to offer. Don't forget that either. Heck yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys for calling in, showing up. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> have a good night. Oh. Bye. Well, that's a wrap, y'all. Erica, thank you so wow. much for coming on here and having fun with us. You you were great. Thank you. You were great. You were a ton of fun. Bust, but we're good. Yeah, for being under concussion protocols, you, you were fantastic. I know, you today. killed it. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Of course. Everyone that tuned in today, thank you so much. Love you guys. Have fun. Grab a drink. Make a good night. And send that DM. <laughs>